Let's go. Feet together, toes aligned, fingers in place, put them against the chin. Remember precision. Inhale, chin down, elbows up. Pull up, pull up the front. Start with the kneecap, stomach, chest, elbows, and exhale. Roll the shoulders down, pull forward. Keep the elbows parallel and touch them. Inhale, chin down, elbows up. Don't lose the connection between the chin and the knuckles. Pull up more, come on, stretch. And exhale, mouth open, shoulders down, more from here. And touch the elbows. Inhale, full lungs, stretch the front. Kneecaps, chest, elbows, and exhale. Keep the spine straight, don't press into your lower back. Inhale. Chin down, up, 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 all the way up, all the way. And now exhale, shoulders down, pull forward from here. Don't press into your neck. Look at the ceiling and touch it. Inhale, chin down. Coordinate the breath with the movement. Make it smooth, make it elastic, and exhale. Now drop the shoulders, pull forward, keep the spine straight, and then touch it. Inhale, one, two, three, four, five, six, and exhale, one, two, three, four, five, six. Inhale, chin down, full lungs. Pull, 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 tighten the buttocks and the belly. Exhale, mouth open, shoulders down. Keep the rib cage straight. More from here. Inhale. That's where the stress monkey sits. Move the head at the same time. Squeeze your glutes. Pull up more. And exhale. Now shoulders down. Then forward. Slide the fingers together in a double fist. And then touch the wrists and elbows. Inhale. Keep stretching. Feel the ribs separate. Get in touch with what's happening in your body. And exhale. Mouth open, shoulders down. You have to feel the upper back stretch and stop a moment. Shake out your hands. Second set. Check your feet, make sure they're still aligned. Fingers interlaced, firm contact with the chin and begin, inhale. Chin down, pull, start pulling up and tightening the buttocks and pulling in the belly. Exhale, slide the fingers together, massage your hands. Arthritis prevention. And touch the elbows, inhale. Pull up more. And exhale, pull forward, drop the shoulders more down and forward. And keep your spine perfectly straight, all the joints aligned. Inhale, chin down, moves elastically, smoothly, and continuously. Pull in the belly and tighten the butt, and exhale. Training your glutes to support you effectively will really help in the one-legged postures. Inhale, those are the, the three glute, gluteal muscles are your balancing muscles on one leg, and you want to have them really effective. And exhale, spine straight, touch the elbows, inhale, stretch your fingers, press down more, stretch it, pull up more, and exhale, slide the fingers together, spine straight, touch it, inhale. Try to keep your entire spine straight. Tendency for a lot of you are bending at the lower back. Try to keep it straight and exhale. Roll the shoulders down. That will encourage your shoulders stay in line with your hips and your knees and your ankles. Inhale, it's posture training of your body's bodily posture. That's what you want to create here and exhale. Slide the fingers, spine straight. 
touch it. Inhale, pull in the belly. Why are you sticking it out? Pull it in, pull it in, keep it in. And exhale, now drop your shoulders and pull forward, keep the spine straight, don't press in here. And touch it. Inhale, chin down, pull in the abdomen. Come on, lift, 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 weight on the heels, chin down more, chin down. And exhale, shoulders down, elbows forward, spine straight, and then touch. See how different it is from what you're doing? And inhale. Develop awareness of what is happening to your breathing. Breathing, mindful breathing, and exhale. Roll, don't press in your lower back. Pull forward more. Stretch the upper back and touch it. Inhale. Big stretch. Stretch, stretch, stretch. Hold it. And exhale. Okay, enough of that. Not too bad. There really weren't too many of you that needed adjusting. I'm encouraged. Feet together, toes aligned. Arms overhead. Cross your fingers. Release the index. Do your loosening up moves. To the right, to the left. Back and forth. Lubricate those spinal joints, hip joints. So everything is moving smoothly. And then back to the center. Grip the fingers closely together. Stretch up to the max. Pull the arms behind your ears. Chest up, stomach in, and rock back into the heels. And now straight line. Stretch your arms and chest to the right. Push the hips to the left. Keep the shoulders in line with your hips. No twisting, no turning. Keep the weight into the heels. Elbows locked, knees locked, stomach in. Everything in a straight line. Precision of alignment. Come on, keep your belly thin. I don't want those things hanging out in front. Conscious control of all the musculature of your body. Stretch, stretch, stretch. Chin away from the chest. Do not cover your throat with your chin. If you see the mirror, freely visible. Arms a little more back, everybody. And come up, back to the center. Pull out of your hips. Stretch up straight line. Stomach in and weight on the heels. Don't do a backward bend in this. Now, this is very exaggerated lordatic curve. Pull the chest up. Keep your stomach in. Keep the shoulders in line with your hips, not behind them. And to the left, straight line. Because all those of you girls who are very flexible and you're pressing into your lower back, you're getting back pain, and then you're going to be blaming yoga. Blame your incorrect form. Left shoulder a little bit forward, right shoulder a little bit back. Some of you are not quite in line. Pay attention. Chin away from the chest. Weight on the heels. Elbows locked. Push the hips. Squeeze your glutes again. Create a strong base with the lower body so that your knees and your buttocks, everything are firm. Push a little more and come up. Back to the center. Pull out of your hips. Maximum upward stretch. Tighten the buttocks, press them forward as far as you can, keep the glutes firm, and drop back with the upper body. Look at the wall, stretch your arms toward it, and keep going. It's a continuously trying to get a little more back with the arms and shoulders. More weight behind you, hands behind you. Point your fingers to the wall, not the ceiling. The more weight behind you, the more help you get from gravity. Keep stretching. Feel the stretch from the knees to the chin, every single inch. Push, stretch the belly. Again, no, don't let that fat rest there in peace. Stretch a little more and come up. Go forward, touch the floor. Do your loosening up. Either bending one knee, straightening the other, or rocking from hip to hip, or squatting down briefly. Whichever is your preferred method of releasing the stretch in the opposite direction. And then bend your knees, put your chest and stomach against the legs, grab your heels from behind, make sure you position the elbows on the calf muscles, not alongside the leg. And grip the heel. Don't hold it sort of casually, Juan. Hold your heel with the palm full of heel. Use your arm strength. And 
chest, stomach, face against the legs, up with the hips and down with the head, till the whole spine is straight, the legs are straight, and your chest, stomach, and face are glued to the front of your body. Keep working. Once you're in that position, see if you can pull up your kneecaps. Kneecaps pulled up. Breathing, abdomen pulled in, lift the pelvic floor a little bit. All those things will verify that you have achieved, achieved the final posture and come up. Arms down, couple of breaths, second set. Feet together, toes aligned, arms overhead. Cross your fingers, release the index, stretch up and create a straight line. Lock the elbows and knees, tighten the butt and belly and rock back into the heels. Keep your weight on the heels, everything straight line, go to the right. Keep the abdomen in and with your conscious awareness, push the hips to the left. Keep exhaling, chin away from the chest. Look in the mirror, a little bit higher than lower, so that you don't have a tendency with the head to sink down. Keep exhaling, locking the knees, locking the elbows, pushing the hips till you have a maximum stretch on the left side. From the heel to the fingertips, push a little more and come up. Back to the center, up and over to the back. More, 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 head back, everything loaded into the heels. Pull in the belly, tighten the buttocks and go to the left. Straight line, no gap between the head and the arms, no gap between the knees, especially if you're bow-legged. Keep pushing the knees together and start correcting the hip insertions there. <coughs> Exhale, don't forget the 2080 style breathing. Exhale 20%, retain 80% to maintain your endurance. Push, come on, I see a lot of hanging bellies. Come on, pull them in, pull them in. Push the hips a little more and come up. Back to the center, pull out of your hips. Tighten the buttocks, press them forward and just drop back quickly. Second set, don't waste time. Get more of your weight behind you so you can really hang out there. Let the upper body hang from your hips like a wet towel. Arms more back, look back. Body follows the eyes, so look back. Whatever you see there, stretch your fingers toward it. Don't point them up, point them back. More back, more weight back, more stretch in the front. Come on, push a little more, squeeze your glutes, keep them tight. Keep them pushed forward. How else are you going to get that great yoga butt? This is the way to do it. Squeeze those muscles and come up. Now, if you can go forward now with the spine straight, arms straight, legs straight, that would be great. But if not, you know, do the best you can. Grab the heels. No preparation needed. You're well lubricated. Grab your heels and work it. Use your hand strength, your arm strength. Tie your chest to your legs. And with your forehead touching, <clears throat> get those hips up all the way. <clears throat> Keep the exhalations coming. Pushing the knees back. Little by lift, little more weight to the front of your toes. Touch your forehead, come on. How else are you gonna stretch your butt? Touch your forehead. Uh, okay, come on. <clears throat> Couple of breaths. Awkward pose. Look to your feet. Place them six inches parallel. Arms in front. Six inches parallel. Nice firm triceps. No dingle dangles. Chest up. Stomach in. Go to the chair level. Watch your knees. Keep them over the toes. Same distance between the knees as between the toes and heels. No, nothing is turning in or out. Press the weight into the heels. <clears throat> Load the heels more and more. Press down with them. Press in more. Chest up, stomach in. Push a little more. Try to get to the point where you almost fall back. And push up. Up on your tippy toes. All the way. Press the toes into the floor. Create a little mini platform with them. And with your chest up, stomach in, lower yourself to the chair level. Watch the knees again. Don't let them turn. They stay directly over the toes. Go to the chair level, not a bar stool. Come on, Terry, go down. Good form. Go down a little more. Challenge that last inch. 
One more inch and push up. <clears throat> Third one. Heels just a little bit up, knees together. Create a pressure point between the knees and lead with the knees. It's a leading edge. Go down all the way till your hips and heels are barely touching. Get out of the habit of sinking into them. Keep the knees active and pushed forward and down as your rib cage lifts up and back. Stomach is firmly pulled in. Shoulders are pushed down away from your ears. Your concentration and your balance should be 100% and very light and easy. And push up. Not too bad either. Okay, a couple of breaths. Second set. Again, look at your feet. Six inches parallel. Be precise. Arms in front, all fingers together, hands on shoulder level, firm triceps, and sit down. In the second set, try to get in the posture within two to three seconds. So you spend more of your time actually doing the posture instead of preparing to do. Keep working the heels. Press more and more and more of your weight into the heels. Find the edge of the posture where you're almost ready to lose it, and then find the strength to do sustain it. Don't let the shoulders round forward. Pull the rib cage up more and come up. Up on your tippy toes. Lift the heels, press the toes into the floor, lock your knees for a moment, pull your stomach in. Always work with the core, the inner corset. That's what you want to always keep engaged. And then sit down. Keep the belly firm and sit into the chair level again. Knees over the toes. Heels up. Heels up. Heels up. Arches forward. Heels up. Knees up. Chest up. Hips down. Shoulders down. Sit at the chair, not the bar stool. And push up. That needs a little more work. A little more on the heel, on the toes, heels up a little bit, press the knees together, and go down. Controlled and slow. The more slowly you move, the better conditioning you achieve. If you just flop in and out, it is, you know, more like calisthenics. I want you to really feel yoga. Press your shoulders down. Come on, no shoulders by the ears. Shoulders down, stomach in. Nice, strong underarms so that you don't have any dingle dangles when you grow older. Hold it there, concentrate, and push up. Couple of breaths, we're ready for the eagle. Arms overhead, cross your right elbow under the left. Then cross the wrists. Put your palms together with the thumbs toward your face. And pull the elbows down. Do not practice with your fingers interlaced. You can interlace them. But then you open them up with the fingertips matched up, pull the elbows down, sit down in a backward bending position, chest up, stomach in. Don't let your elbows go down towards the knees. Pull them up and away from the knees. And then the right leg over the left. You can twist the hips to the left as much as you need to hook the big toe behind the ankle. That is the key to the posture. Once the big toe is in place, you sit down a little more, slide the rest of the toes behind, and keep pulling the rib cage out of your hips, up and back, deepening that lumbar curve. Chest up, knees centered under your elbows, everything straight line, not one hip higher than the other, and change. Arms overhead, left arm under the right, cross the elbows, palms together, Interlace the fingers, but then please open them up again. Pull down the fingers in line with your nose. And then sit down in that position. Bend the knees as deeply as you can. But as your left foot leaves the floor, or is it the right one? Left one. Do not let your right knee straighten. Keep the knee bent so that you don't feel like your left leg is too short. There should be no gap between chest up more. Chest up, out of your hips, please. Out of your hips. Separate the upper body from the lower body. You have to get in touch with the energy flows. The hips are continuously grounding, going downward. The rib cage comes the opposite direction, up and back. More up and back, centering the elbows and the hips and change. Second set, right arm under the left. Come on, stretch those shoulders, work the shoulder girdle. It's a forgotten joint of the body. And then you wonder why people get 
pains and misery there. Pull the elbows down, sit down in a backward bending position. Get in touch with your lumbar curve, with your stomach in. Pull the belly in, and right over the left. Twist, hook the toe, sit down a little more. Slide the big toe to the ankle bone. When you are practicing, but that you can see the mirror, pay attention to these points, that that will verify that your posture is in the right alignment. And re believe me, you want to have your posture be in the right alignment. When you repeat it every day, you don't want to learn the wrong way, do you? Change. Arms overhead, left arm under the right. Cross the elbows, cross the wrists. And before you sit down, try to get in the habit of pulling in the belly. Pull in the belly and sit down in the backward bending position. Don't let that abdomen hang there like a loose flap of skin. And then left over the right, twist, hook, sit down a little more, but keep pulling the rib cage out. Don't sag into your hips with the upper body. You've got to get in touch with your lumbar curve again. A lot of you don't know where it's gone, it's lost. I'm looking down the, the row and there are spines that are like a straight board. There has to be a little curve in that lower back what nature intended to have there, change. All right, have some refreshments. Standing head to knee. Fingers interlaced. Bend over and place your right foot in your interlaced hands so the fingers are behind the midfoot. Do not hold the toes because they're soft and mushy and they won't give you good purchase on the foot. And make sure as you extend your right heel forward that your left knee is locked and your wrists are stretching. Teach your fingers to become like steel hooks holding on to the bones of the midfoot. As you're pushing the heel forward, point the toes back towards your head. Don't go too high because the moment you go up there, you lose the effectiveness of the foot to allow you to really get those toes to turn back. And the heel pointing forward and stretching the underneath the leg really well. Arms should feel like they're stretching from the shoulders to the fingers, and that includes the wrists. Change. Pick up your left foot, place your foot in your interlaced hands again, holding on with those strong fingers. Lock your right knee. Before you move anything, you've got to push that right knee back and tighten the thigh muscles. Remember, it's a two-step process. First, you line up the bones by pushing back on the knee bones. Then, to keep them there, squeeze those muscles surrounding the knee joint. And only then extend your left heel forward. Slowly, monitoring your right knee, practicing mindfulness, pushing the hip forward until the heel is parallel on the same line as your hip joint. The whole leg is parallel to the floor. Keep pushing a little more from the hip, feeling a stretch in your arms, all the way from the shoulders to the fingers. That way you've lined up, the vertical loading is correct. Hip over the knee, over the ankle, straight line, change. Second set. Pick up your right foot again. Nice firm grip. This time, as you extend your right heel forward, both knees are locked. You feel the stretch in your arms. You activated that right hip a little more. Now you're ready to bring the elbows to the calf muscle. Tighten your abdomen and keep bringing the elbows down. Imagine you're gonna touch your shoulders on the calf. <clears throat> that will activate more of your back muscles. When that's still at work, with it working good, your balance is okay, tuck your chin in and pushing that hip forward. See if you can get the forehead on top of your knee. Nice, Irina. Good form. 
Toes are pointing, forehead is on top of the knee, elbows maybe a quarter of an inch lower, okay? Change. Left leg, pick it up. Come on, move, this is a warm up. It doesn't happen from standing around. Now lock your right knee, bend over till the left knee is parallel with the hip, and then all you do is extend the heel forward. Keep your mind on your right knee, keep pushing the left hip forward, and if you're ready, bring those elbows down. Wrap them down around the calf muscle, keep them touching. That way it will keep the assurance that you're in the right place. Keep pushing the hip forward, elbows down more, elbows down, elbows down, elbows down, everybody. Tuck the chin and touch the forehead. Keep pushing the hip forward so it's the kneecap that you touch, not the shin bone. Good, okay, that's got it. Okay, let's do the bow. Right elbow against the hip bone, palm in upward position. Imagine you have a coin in that hand. Do not twist the wrist and drop the coin. Pick up your right foot from the inside. All five fingers together. Nobody hold the shin bone. I want you to go an inch above the ankle bone. An inch above with the fingers. And point your toe. Don't flex the foot. Point it. Because if you have your hand where you want to have it right on, on top of the ankle bone, as you kick up, your hand slides and immediately you lose the effectiveness of the action of the foot. So keep your fingers over the midfoot. Tall guy there, go up more with your fingers. Yes, there. Now left arm up, stand up straight, create a strong left side. Square your hips towards the mirror or the floor, chin up more, look at your uh, left hand or look in the mirror at your head somewhere up there. Now kick back just enough till you feel a stretch in your right arm. Keep your right hip parallel to the floor and kick up and go down till your stomach is parallel to the floor. Go down more, roll the hip a little more, right hip parallel, don't let the hip turn out. This is not a ballet class, it is yoga. Keep those hips parallel to the floor. So you can effectively use all of the gluteus muscles to actually lock out the knee or get it as high as you possibly can. And change. You're turning here too much. Don't let the glute pull you this way. Keep it this way. Now, left leg. Touch your knees together and square your hips towards the mirror or the floor. Right arm up. Stand up straight. Keep your right knee locked. And now keep your knee behind you. Roll the hip down more. Roll the hip. Roll the hip down more. Roll the hip. You're using too much of the energy to let it turn out. You use all of the energy to kick up. Go down more. Go down. Go down. Go down. You have to start from the inside here where the attachments are. Come on, everybody go down till the stomach is parallel. So you can, your stomach is pointing towards the meat instead of for, to the floor. Go to the floor with this belly button. Go to the floor with the belly button. I know it's gonna be hard because you've got such a habit now. Okay, second set. Pick up your right foot again. All fingers together. Strong steel grip on the midfoot. Nobody hold the shin bone. The closer you are to the shin bone, the less effective you're gonna be. Left arm up, stand up straight and lock your knee and keep this parallel. Now kick back, slowly, feel the stretch in your arm. Be aware of your hip joint. Touch it, lock it. Kick and go down. Don't stop at three-quarter position. Go down all the way. Three more inches down one. More down. More down. More down. More down. Yes, now start squeezing. See, when you have it twisted, you can't squeeze it. It has the lock comes from here. As long as I can wiggle the muscle, that muscle isn't doing its job. You're trying to do it with the pulling and the kicking. It's a squeezing of the gluteus muscle that locks out the knee in the standing splits. 
Okay, left leg. Pick it up. Touch your knees together. Right arm up. Stand up straight. Lock your knee. Look up. Now slowly kick back just enough to feel the stretch in your left arm. Then as you kick, make it 50-50. You're letting it turn. See, this, this becomes soft and mushy when you let that happen. Down more. Down more. Stretch forward. Because when you start doing the squeeze here, you come more from the shoulder, connect the two shoulders, but it's still a little bit too much turn. Maybe a, a half an inch more if you could turn it more down. Because at your level, you sh there should be no problem locking out the knee. Everything is good except that internal thing in the hip joint. Kick, kick, kick. And let's do the stick. Feet together, arms over your head. Cross your fingers, release the index, create a straight line, stretch up. Lock your elbows, chin away from your chest. Don't look down and step forward with the right leg. I'm seeing your peak. The floor has not moved, I assure you, so don't look down. Lift the arms. The moment you start going down with the chest, start lifting the arms. Roll that left hip, roll it one, roll it. This is the place where you'd want to get that hip in the right place. The conditioning starts in this. Roll it, roll it, come on, roll it down. Roll it down one, roll it down. <laughs> All right, step back. Keep him like this, parallel. Now step with the left leg. Lock your left knee, lock your right knee. Come on, roll it down. <laughs> roll it down. Roll it, roll. yes, that's it, now hold it there. Hold it, hold it, hold it, arms up, hold it. Little old ladies can do it and you can do it. Give me a break. All right, separate leg. Oh, second set, all right. I can. I don't know if I can stand it. <laughs> Feet together, arms over your head, cross your fingers, release the index, create a straight line with your chin away from your chest. Don't look down and step with the right leg. Lock your right knee, lock your left knee. Keep your hips parallel and stretch forward, lifting the arms as you go down. Lifting the arms, lifting the leg. Go down till your arms, torso, and leg are parallel to the floor. Chest down more, leg up, leg up, chest down, arms up. Hold it there, this is the place, hold it. That's perfect, wonderful. This is what it should be, Juan. Look at this, look at this. <laughs> and change. <laughs> All right, did we do left side? No, step with the left. Don't look down, lock your left, lock your right. Roll your right hip down and keep lifting the arms. Arms up, leg up, chest down. Just a tiny bit more. Just roll the hip a little bit more. There you go. Now that's parallel, just hold it there. Okay. Couple of breaths. Separate leg, feet together, arms over your head. Four foot step to the right, arms shoulder level. Parallel the feet, do not let them be turned out. They can be a little turned in, but never turned out. Push your knees back, pull your belly in with your chin away from your chest. Hinge forward from the hips, lengthen the spine forward. Slide the hands down the back of your legs and grab your heels. Hold on to the heels or the sides of your feet and bend your elbows. All five fingers have to be together, including the thumb. It's the most effective digit of the five. And then bend your elbows and drop your head down till the forehead touches the floor in front of you or between your feet. Elbows can be bent as much as 90 degrees. That's the arms, are, it's what's stretching your spine. The knees are pushed back so your legs are automatically straight and becomes a frame upon which you're stretching the canvas of your spine. 
touch it, bend the elbows more, pull the stomach in, roll a little bit forward if you have to, and come up. Arms down, feet together, couple of breaths. Second set. Feet together, arms over your head. Four foot step to the right, arms shoulder level. Adjust your feet, either parallel or slightly in. Push the knees back and pull your stomach in. With your chin away from your chest, go forward, lengthening your spine. Keep the belly in. Your lower back is stretching, so give it support from the front. Grab your heels or the sides of your feet and work your arms. Pull. Bend the elbows. Pull. People with long legs have to go a little wider than the four feet. Now, girl in front of me, get your legs apart another 12 inches, I would say. More. More. Much, 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 much more. Much, much more. Look how wide they both people on both sides of you. Look how wide they are. You're just miles away from it still, and you've got legs that are longer than theirs. And come up. A couple of breaths, and have a sip of water to get yourself hydrated for the triangle. I hope that all of you have perfected it now, so that you are truly shining stars doing a beautiful, perfect triangle. Okay, put your feet on the line. Arms over head. Take a four foot step to the right. Long legged people, an inch or two more. Nobody less than that. Arm shoulder level. Turn the right foot parallel to the mirror and make sure your heels are on the same parallel line. Check it, make sure that, not quite, Irina, just half an inch more, either forward was one or back was the other. Stand up straight. Do not bend your right knee. I see bent knees in the front. Don't. Put your hips in neutral with the legs straight. See, this is what happens when you bend that knee you don't feel the neutrality of your hips. Don't bend it. You have to keep the knee straight and do the adjustment in your hips. And then bend your knee. And keep that left hip rolling. See what would happen? The knee will go in if you don't do that. Sit down. Sit down. Knee over the center of the ankle. Hips on the level of your knee. Go down. You have to roll the hip more and go down. Then tilt your, see, don't come back up again. Stay down with the hip rolled forward. You haven't learned yet. Roll this hip. And touch your elbow against the knee. Look up at your left hand and close the left shoulder. See, you're getting pain there because you refuse to rotate the hip joint. Fingertips to the big toe, no weight on the hand. You have a little bit of that same problem, a little more down and forward, ribcage up and back. This is how it should feel. Now come up. Turn your right foot, turn, but look at your feet, too wide, too, oh, not even, the heels on the same line, wider. Now stand up straight, push the hips forward, upper body back. As you bend your left knee, let your right hip rotate forward. Keep the shoulders parallel, don't do it with the upper body. Sit down a little more. Now tilt, keep the hips down. As you stretch your right arm up, don't follow it with your hip. Keep pushing the hip down and forward. Good, you understood. That's the whole most important part. Okay, you're getting better. Look up at your right thumb, twist the rib cage away from the hip, and come up. Some of you aren't sitting down enough. And usually it's because you didn't rotate the hip more enough forward. Second set. Feet together, arms over your head. Four foot step to the right, arms shoulder level. Turn the right foot, line up the heels. Do not bend the right knee. Put the hips in neutral and push them forward. And then bend your right knee, let the left hip rotate towards the front. Sit down till the thigh is parallel, crotch on the same level as your knee. A little more down. 
Tilt your upper body, elbow against the knee. Fingertips to the big toe. Keep stretching the shoulders in opposite direction. You have to drop the hip again. You do have long legs, but you have to get down more with this hip there. Look up, stretch up with the chest and shoulder away from your hip, and come up. Turn your right foot, turn the left. Do not change the distance between the heels. Push this forward more, push forward. No, you sank into the hip. I want neutral hips and forward. And then bend the knee and let this hip go forward from the in internally, internal rotation. Okay, tilt. You didn't rotate your hip, my dear. Hip forward from the inside. Right, and pull the rib cage away from it. Up and back, good, good. Good. Not too bad. There's a majority of you, you got the message. Okay, come up. I haven't had anybody lately come up to me and complain about hip pain, which in a way is also a testimonial that maybe you're doing the triangle right. Okay, separated leg forehead to the knee. Feet together, arms over your head. Put your palms together, prayer fashion, cross only your thumbs. Take a three foot step to the right, 36 inches, and turn to the right. Keep turning till both hip bones are squared towards the right. Lock your elbows, put your wrists closer together, tuck your chin into your chest, pull your belly in, and round in like you're gonna do the rabbit pose. Don't stretch out. I don't know why some of you are still stretching. Come back up again. Come back up. Come on, do it. Now push your chin into your chest. Look right in here and stretch your arms down and bring the head in, 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 in. Touch it, touch your pinkies. There has to be a lot of compression in the front of your body. It's not a stretched out extended posture. It, the front is compressed. And that will create the appropriate action in the appropriate parts of the back of your body. Come up. Pivot on your heels. Face the left wall. Be precise about the feet. Some of you are uh, 36, but some of you are 48 inches. Some of you are 24 inches. Be precise with the feet, please. Tuck your chin in, suck your stomach in, and go into the posture around it, scrunching the front. Touch your pinkies, touch your forehead, keep your right heel on the floor. Elbows remain locked, palms stay together. Breathe, keep the elbows straight. Try to work the forehead on top of the knee, not the nose or the chin. And inhale, come up. Arms down, feet together, couple of breaths. Second set. Feet together, arms over your head. Three foot step to the right, 36 inches, turn to the right. Keep turning as many times as you need to square the hips. Don't leave the left hip hanging. Now pull your stomach in nice and firm. Anytime you're stretching the back of the body, Contract the front, support with actively with the muscles, and curl in, do the rabbit pose. Choke, 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 choke. Stretch the arms, the arms are going down. The head is going back up into the body until the forehead is able to place, be placed on the kneecap. Try not to split the arms. That means that you need a crutch. Try to not depend on extraneous, make your core actually do the work that nature designed it to do. Okay, come on. Pivot on your heels, face the left wall. Don't pull the legs in. Some of you are doing it on one side from one distance and the other side from another distance. Be precise. Tuck your chin in, suck your stomach in and curl in. Both hips are parallel not one hip higher than the other. All those things matter. Keep your right heel on the floor and the right knee will be absolutely locked. The back leg never bends. It's the front knee that temporarily can be bent for a beginner. But none of you are beginners anymore. 
you're almost teachers getting down the line there. Come up. Arms down, couple of breath. Three pose, right leg up. Rotate the ankle, get the top of the foot on the top of your thigh, as high as you can. Way up, way up. Bottom of the foot should be pointing away from you, either the mirror or the ceiling, and you keep pushing that right knee down and back and closer to your left knee till ultimately both knees are hip width apart and in, on the same parallel line. Keep the right hip neutral with the knee going back, but keep pushing your left hip forward. Give pressure to the top of your right foot so that the foot will stay there and you can put your right hand to the chest, you can put your left hand to the chest. Again, it's a test for your core. Your health and longevity depends on the health of your core because as you live your life, the one thing you don't want to do is keep crashing down because your core can support you in unpredictable situations and change. Left leg up. Rotate the ankle again. Keep turning, keep turning. That will take the pressure off the knee. This posture is not at all hard on the knee. If you have rotated the ankle and the hip, the, the joints that you want to be affecting are the top and the bottom, not the middle. Push the knee back and the hip forward. Knee back and forward and the right hand to the chest, left hand to the chest. Concentrate, practice mindfulness. And change. Toe stand, right leg up. Again, same kind of ankle rotation so that there is minimal pressure on the knee. Bend over, touch the floor. If you can go in namaskar, that's great. I would encourage everybody at least to try. Sometimes you'll surprise yourself. Go down, put your right hand to the chest, put your left hand to the chest. Make sure that you consciously control your abdomen and don't let your hips sink into your heel. Press the toes into the floor and keep a little space between the hip and the heel. Look at the floor in front of you because your head is like a loose cannonball on the deck of a ship. You've got to control it so it doesn't sink you. And push up. Okay, the other leg. Come on, toddlers. Practice a little more efficiency. Strong abdomen, press the toes into the floor. Keep the hips and the heel a little apart. Look at the floor in front of you, concentrate. Keep your abdomen nice and firm. Let's see if you come up with pushing the foot into the floor and stretching your arms up. Do it, Yorina. Push the foot more. Get the heel down. Yeah, oh, but you have to stretch your arms more forward. So your weight isn't down there. Your arms forward. Yes, like that. More stretching. You had a better idea with that. From the shoulders, really keep getting the weight forward. And press the heel into the floor. <laughs> but that's how you're gonna strengthen it. Okay, on your back. It's sort of like we're lifting weights and you're getting to the 12th repetition and you feel that your muscles are, you know, they still have that extra little, uh, that's what you need. That's the point when you get up without your hands helping you on the floor. Arms by your side, palms toward the ceiling. Remember to breathe through your nose, abdominally, diaphragmatically, to in fact activate the relaxation response. 
breathe low and slow, deep and calm, and let the body just sink into the floor, drain all the pre-existing tension from it. You did a lot of overriding of your habitual tension. So as you release the new willfully induced tension, let's clear out some of the old one that's been hanging out there for years maybe. You're the victim of your stress. You're the product of all the metabolic events of your life up to this point. And it's reflected in your body, in your posture, in a lot of signals and signs that your body projects. The human quantum mechanical body needs certain things in order to stay healthy. And fortunately, Bikram Yoga provides almost all of them. You need, first and foremost, oxygen. The second thing you can't live without is water. Those two things you can tolerate the loss of them for very short periods. The third thing you need is food. That's not quite as critical over a long time that will also be very damaging. So proper nutrition is certainly an indicated thing. And the fourth thing you need is movement. Intelligent, completely conditioning so that the whole, not only the mechanical body, the outside, but all your internal processes, the various systems are connected to the physical movement of the body. So you're, yeah, that's an instrument that conditions the internal health and well-being of the human body. And it connects it ultimately to the multidimensional aspect, the energy levels, energy bodies that you're part of, the multidimensional aspect. And they are all connected through the that different organs of the body and your metabolic fitness is determined through their function. Okay, Pavan Muktasana, right knee up. Fingers interlaced, two inches below the knee, pull the knee towards your right shoulder, flatten your neck, tuck your chin in, back of the head is on the floor. Here's pressure in your lower abdomen, your ascending colon should be getting some conditioning. Neck flat, chin down, shoulders away from the ears, elbows more toward the floor, and your left calf muscle resting on the floor. Take a checklist, just like a, a, a pilot, before he takes off the airplane off the runway, he goes through a checklist. Well, the instruction for your posture is your checklist in order to make sure you have a good outcome, good takeoff and good landing check and see that your body actually is doing what the description of the posture is asking it to do. Change. Lower the right, bring up the left. Fingers interlace, two inches below the knee. Use the fingers and let the wrist stretch. Never have a grip where your wrists are involved in the holding of it. They should always be comfortably uh, relaxed position or stretching. Neck flat, chin down, right calf muscle on the floor. The weight distribution of your body in the back should be very even. From right to left, top to bottom, no hot spots anywhere. Check it, develop an awareness. Practice mindfulness. Attention management, that's the biggest problem with new people starting yoga because they don't know how to manage their attention, how to connect their body with the words they're hearing. Change. Both knees up, fold the forearms over the knees and grab your elbows. And I do mean grab, use some strength to really wrap the arms tightly around the legs, pull them together first, use your elbows so no gap between the knees then no gap in, in the knees and the front of your body. But mainly the pressure should be in the lower part, the abdomen, the soft, mushy, gushy parts. Try to avoid getting a lot of pressure on your rib cage, on the bones, because that is not beneficial for it. 
So press the tailbone down, so direct the pressure in the lower abdomen, so your transverse colon, your whole intestinal uh, arrangement in, the, in that area will get the conditioning and release. Arms by your side, palms toward the ceiling. You have very, I understand your today's lecture is going to be, make sure you get all the earplugs out and the cotton out of your ears and learn to listen because John Burris is a very important, he talks about a very important aspect of yogis and that's connective tissue because that is what you're manipulating. You're changing and rearranging in order to achieve, some of you, to achieve the posture, you have to first change how your connective tissue is arranged and understand how it's keeping you back from being your best. Second set, right knee up. Try to execute it in two to three seconds. Grab your knee, pull it in position. It doesn't take a half a morning to do that. In the second set, you know exactly where your body should be to get your optimal reaction. Neck flat, chin down, shoulders down calf muscle on the floor, everything nice and still. Because it isn't yoga until you create a point of stillness and hold it for the appropriate amount of seconds. Change. Left knee up, right away in position, neck flat, and down. Everything should be in your awareness. It should become like a reflex. Once you're conditioned, you really become an advanced student. That's what demonstrates how advanced you are, how long it takes for you to get into the posture, what sort of adjustments you're making. All that should be like one smooth move. Change. Both knees up. Grab your elbows. Give yourself a hug. Tell yourself you love yourself and start your tug of war. Hold on to the knees. Keep them in position and press the tailbone down. Continuously press the tailbone into the floor to create more pressure in the internal organs. Hold it there. Breathe into any part that is uncomfortable and release. Arms by your side, palms toward the ceiling and breathe into the belly. Low and slow, deep and calm, letting the body relax totally. The more able you to relax between the active portions, the greater the benefit of the whole experience, the whole 90 minutes. Take a quantum leap forward when you're able to really practice an efficient relaxation. Because stress is your greatest enemy. Stress is basically like mental dirt, and practicing good relaxation and good active postures is a good internal hygiene. Okay. Ready? Feet together, toes up. I want a good setup. I don't want to have to complain about it. Knees locked, heels pressed into the floor, stomach pulled in, arms overhead, hook your thumbs. Take a breath, hold it, sit up. Grab your feet and pound the forehead on the knees and the elbows on the floor next to your calf muscles. Don't waste the best conditioning experience through this 90 minutes. That's all the sit-ups. Place your hands under the shoulders, fingertips at the edge of the shoulder. Be precise. Do not go on automatic, especially the back row here. I usually have more trouble with people who have practiced a long time and acquired bad habits because they habitually do it the wrong way. A little more up one. Okay. Half an inch and that was perfect. Now touch your elbows to the rib cage and do not stop touching it there. Touch your feet together and keep them together. Squeeze your buttocks and keep them squeezed and come up to the belly button level. And keep those elbows going down and back towards the hips, touching your rib cage, ultimately touching the hips. Elbows are down, 
and back, shoulders are down and forward. I see in the back row people whose shoulders are not down. And that is not a good sign for teachers. And change. Turn the head sideways. I generally don't have that much of a problem with the trainees because they, are, they can only do what they've been taught by the teachers to do. But I do blame the teachers. If they cannot have a clear understanding of the precise form of a very important posture like the cobra, I, I, I get a little disturbed by it. So please, second set, I want to see everybody doing it right. It's all in the placement of your hands and your limbs. Fingertips in line with your shoulders. Little finger in line with the outside of the shoulder. Chin on the floor. Elbows touching the rib cage. Feet touching, knees touching, bottoms tight. Come on up to the belly button. No higher, no lower. Shoulders down and forward, elbows down and back. Pressing the hands if you need the extra help to get the rib cage off to the belly button level. Precision, keep the elbows touching, keep the elbows touching, no broken chicken wings outside, and change. Turn the other ear on the floor. Make sure it's the ear, not just the side, because you want to have a really good stretch, a conditioning stretch in your cervical spine. You want to make sure that your cervical spine and your lumbar spines are the, doing their job properly. Because the center of the spine, the thoracic spine, is not designed to do much of anything except keeping the bones, the, the, the uh, spinal bones in line. Because the discs between them are only one sixteenth of the thickness of the bones, whereas in the cervical and the lumbar spine, the thickness of the discs is about one quarter of the bone, which is much more uh, designed to be much more effective at assisting in the uh, movement, in the bending, in the twisting of those areas, but never the center spine. Okay, let's go on. Put your arms under you for the locust. Reach as far as you can towards the knees with the palms flat, fingers spread apart, your chin stretched forward, and lock your right knee, point your right toe, lift the right leg 45 degrees from the floor, keeping your right hip bone on your right forearm bone. That will make sure that your buttocks, your gluteus, are performing exactly as a posture is asking them to perform. Do not do any twisting and turning and don't move up and down, stay still. Change. Left leg, remember it's only yoga when you have this point of stillness. Up, knee lock, toe pointed, hips level, both buttocks on the same line, squeeze your thigh muscles. Tight, tight legs, teach those muscles to do the job. Change. Mouth under, elbows still underneath you. Take a breath on the exhalation, both legs up together. Lift and press the fingers into the floor. Keep your feet together and keep lifting. Keep lifting. Five more seconds, all the way up. And a slow landing. Turn the ear on the floor again. Feel the stretch in your cervical spine. The more flexible those muscles, and there are a bunch of them all packed in very tight quarters along with a bunch of nerves, as you learned, I hope, in your anatomy class. You want to keep them really very functional. And a gentle passive stretch that you're doing in a yoga class here is the best day to deal, way to deal with the area because uh, you don't want to aggravate. Because if you do, the muscles go in spasms, they press on the nerves, 
and you go walking around looking like Quasimodo. Okay, put your arms under. Reach as far towards the knees as you possibly can so your shoulders go into the floor. Chin is forward and right leg up. Go. A one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Left leg up. A one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Mouth under. Check those elbows. They should be buried underneath you. Take a breath. Both legs up and go. A one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And a slow let down. Arms out, the other ear on the floor. And breathe abdominally. Check it. See what's moving. Are the lower back ribs expanding? Is your breathing equipment in good working order? Practice mindfulness, awareness, and don't let your attention go out to the outer space. For 90 minutes in the yoga class, train yourself to stay conscious. So many of you are going into unconscious states. Try not to do it in yoga class. Actually experience your life as it happens. Okay, arms out, chin on the floor, feet together. Take a breath, look up and fly. Up, up and away. Balancing on the hip bones, everything else up in the air. Legs up, arms up, chest up. Keep lifting your wings. Put some air under them. Hands more up. Hands more up. And slowly down. Let the body melt with each breath. Discharge that stress. Stress really isn't an event. Stress is a perception. And it's each individual in this group will have a different perception of one the same event. Some of you are finding the class very stressful, I'm sure, and others are maybe even enjoying it. <clears throat> but that's true with each and everything that happens in life. Some things stress out people that other people get energized and, and much more affected by. Okay, one more. Arms out, chin on the floor, feet together. Breath and up you go, lift off. Keep lifting. The chest is the heaviest, so lift the chest, but lift the arms too, the hands, the hands. So your arm muscles actually participate in the lift. A little more up and slowly down. Breathe deeply. And we're ready for the bow, aren't we? Grab your feet. Now do not hold your, your toes. You should by now understand that holding onto bones makes a much better purchase, much more effective use of the, of the energy that you're expending. So don't hold the soft, mushy toes, hold the midfoot. Don't go to the shin bone because again, you use the effective, lose the effectiveness of the foot bones. Chin on the floor, knees are together to start with. I see a lot of spread knees. Those people are, get find out that their knees are in separate counties. Take a breath and the exhalation, look up and start kicking. 
20 seconds of kicking. Lift the knees off the floor, lift the chest, look up. Don't pull your head and chin forward. Keep the head up and get those legs higher. It's only halfway there and some of you are out of the posture already. Five more seconds. I want some energy. I want some effect from this. A little more up. And now down. I don't know. Are you lazy? Are you injured? Are you awake? There isn't much energy in the bow. Okay, let's see if the second set a little better. Don't pull your chin forward. Try to get as much as the weight up one end toward the other. Head towards the feet as quickly as possible. Hold on with your fingertips so your wrists are stretching. This is another posture where you never want to wrap the wrist around the foot. Take a breath on the exhalation. Look up and start kicking. And I do mean kicking, feeling the stretch in your arms. Bring the head back between your arms. Balance on the belly button. Your thighs should be completely off the floor, optimally pointing the knees toward the ceiling. Looking up, head up, a little more up, and slowly down. Just stay with your breath again. Train yourself to stay connected to the breath. It's like a chain on the restless monkey. The mind always wants to jump here, there, and everywhere. The breath is what you can tie it down to the moment you're experiencing. Okay, let's move on. Push up. Now go to the top of the towel and stand up on your knees. Optimally, if you line up the bones before you sit down and not stretching the muscles, they will be much more cooperative. Stand up of the knees, knees together, then spread the lower leg bones apart and sit down between them. That will keep the knees in much more neutral place and will not subject the kneecap to any kind of rotational force. You want to be very careful with the tops of your knees. Your kneecap slips off the track very easily, when, especially when subjected to any kind of rotation. Your knee is a hinge joint, and the more you observe that, the happier your knees will be, the more pain-free your life will be. Now go back on your elbows. Keep exhaling. As you go back, exhale the fear of backward bending. Arms overhead. Grab your elbows, flatten your neck, keep your knees together to the best of your ability so you actually get that superb stretch in the front part of your body that this posture is designed to provide. Starting at the toes, going up the shins, going into the front of your thighs, your abdomen, your rib cage, your underarms, your lymphatic system is getting such a superb conditioning. But you've got to keep things going and stretching and not cheating yourself out of the wonderful result of this posture. Now push up. On your back. Compliance with the design of the posture is your greatest skill that you can acquire. Even the placement of your little finger makes a difference. Every single thing that you arrange in the posture, the more complying with the blueprint, with the dialogue, you're responding, your body is responding to the words spoken. And if your response is gibberish or totally something not incomprehensible, it's very distressing to a teacher. And you're going to be teachers. So learn how to respond to the instruction. Okay, feet together, toes up, arms up, knees locked, heels pressed into the floor, stomach in, sit up. 
Grab your feet, hold on to them, and bang the forehead on the knees and the elbows on the floor. Bang, bang, double jerk, double exhalation. Second set, stand up on your knees again. Spread the heels apart from that position and see what happens to your kneecaps. They say forward. Then go back on your elbows and put your hands on your feet, fingertips toward the heel. Drop the shoulders, the head, neck flat. Hold your elbows. Keep the knees together to the best of your ability. Feel the stretch. Really feel the stretch. It is really a, such a delicious stretch. Ultimately, you will look forward to it. Those of you who may hate it at this point, I guarantee there will come a time when you will enjoy and welcome the posture and push up. Just like the triangle, the more correctly you execute it, the less trauma you'll experience. Feet together, toes up, arms up, knees locked, stomach in. Press the heels into the floor. Do not bend your knees. Take a breath. Hold it. Sit up. Grab your feet. Now pound that forehead. Increase your flexibility. Make an energetic sit up. Go to the bottom of the towel and sit on your heels. Knees together, feet together, arms overhead. Pull out of your hips as much as possible and pull the stomach in. And keep it in. As you stretch forward, belly is in. Lengthen your spine. Touch your pinkies, touch your forehead, chin away from your chest. Do not touch your, shoulder, your elbows or your wrists. Shoulders should be stretching. From fingertip to shoulder, that whole arm length should be stretching. From your neck to your tailbone, it's stretching. Your heels and hips are touching. So the more you implement those points, the greater the internal benefit, the stretch of your lungs and your pericardium. Inhale, come up. On your back. Stay with the breath. Ooh. See, that was stressful. Those of you who should have heard gunshots probably were more startled. Who have not? Okay, feet together, toes up, arms up, inhale, sit up, grab your feet, double jerk, double exhalation, bang, bang. Sit on your heels again, arms overhead, stretch up. Work on the abdomen. Develop a good habit of keeping your abdomen in your awareness. Now go forward. Keep it in. That will keep the hips down much better. Touch your pinkies, touch your forehead. Do not touch the wrists. One. No wrists. Fingers. Inhale. Come up. On your back. Feet together, toes up, arms up, inhale, sit up, grab your feet, double jerk, double exhalation. Stand up on your knees, camel. Try to keep your knees hip width apart. That means anywhere between six and eight inches. If you go too wide, the whole posture becomes one for the hips instead of for your back. So be conscientious, work on your back. Put your hands on the hips, fingers toward the floor. Now push your hips forward and look at the back wall for a couple of breaths. We are all are suffering from a stretch reflex, which generally tries to discourage us from backward bending. Now reach back, grab a heel, hold onto it without sinking into it. 
Hold on and keep pushing the pelvis forward until it's directly over your knees. Not in front of it and not behind it. Again, good vertical road loading so that your hips and knees are perfectly aligned and you pull the rib cage up more, pull the rib cage up more and put your right hand back on the hip, left hand back on the hip and relax. On your back, arms by your side. Feet together, toes up, arms up, knees locked, stomach in, sit up and grab your feet, pound the forehead on the knees, bang, bang. Second set. Up on your knees again, hands on the hips, push the hips forward, look at the back wall, grab your heels. Hold on to them, keep the pelvis forward and the rib cage up. Don't sink back into the arms. Your body weight is not supported with your arms. Put your fingertips flat, Irina. Fingertips against the toes and the heel of the hand against the heel. That's it. Now pull the rib cage up. Oh, yeah. Oh. Wake up the body. A lot of you, the back row, all of you should be doing that. Put the hands flat and come up. Feet together, toes up, arms up, knees locked, stomach in. Grab the feet, bang, bang. Center of the towel. Sit back on your heels, knees together, feet together. Place the hands over the heel, thumb on the outside. All five fingers have to be together uh, and you have a palm full of heel. Now tuck your chin into your chest. Pull the belly in. You're gonna stretch your lower back, so support it from the front. And crunch in. Forehead to the knees, lift up. Roll forward, pull on the heels so the arms are straight, and do not lose contact between the forehead and the knees. Press the forehead back into the knees. Try to crack a walnut. Don't roll in the back of the head. Keep the forehead against the knees and the top of the head in the floor and pull harder on the heels. The moment you start rolling back on the back of your head, you're subjecting the cervical spine to too, too much pressure. Change. It no longer becomes a stretching, but a jamming exp experience. So it changes the whole character of the posture when you do that, not for the better. Feet together, toes up, arms up, sit up and grab your feet. Pound the forehead on the knees. Second set. Knees together, feet together, grab your heels. Make sure your grip is good and not slippery. Tuck your chin in, suck your stomach in. The whole back from the neck to the tailbone should be stretching but being supported with your arm strength. 70% of your body weight is in the arms pulling on the heels. 20% of the rest is in the forehead to the knees. And the very minimal 10% in the top of the head. Now pull your shoulders away from the ears. Pull the shoulders, pull the shoulders away from the ears. Don't roll in the back of the head. Pull the shoulders more. Use your arm strength, arms are straight. Elbows are locked and change.
Feet together. Toes up, arms up, knees locked, stomach in, sit up and grab your feet. Pound the forehead and the elbows on the floor. Stretching. Turn around. Face the mirror. Bend your left knee in front of you. Be bit, again, precise in the placement of the left heel. Keep it in the center against the pubic bone so that the inner thigh and the bottom of your left foot are touching. And you have a 90 degree spread between the knees. A lot of you are too close. When you're too close, you're not getting that right conditioning in your kidney area. So separate the knees the appropriate width so you get the maximum what the posture offers. Go over the right leg. Place your hands behind the midfoot. Press the forehead into your right knee. Lock the knee and press the elbows into the floor next to your calf muscle. Especially the back row here. If the teachers can put their elbows on the, ca on the floor next to your calf muscle, I can't ask too much in the front rows then. Come on, do it. Change. Bend your right. Again, position the heel in the center so there's a 90 degree spread between the knees. Some of you are adjusting only the bent knee side. Adjust both sides so the angle is even on both sides. Now go over the left leg. The toes are straight up. Don't roll out to the side with your foot. I would like this heel to be out. Yeah. Now try. Now touch the elbows and the forehead. Change. Lie back. Grab your big toes with the first two fingers. Wiggle the weight off your tailbone, right and left. Then pull the chest up and pull your belly in. Create a straight line with your spine from the tailbone to the neck. Locked knees, straight spine, bring the two sides together. Start by putting the belly button on your thighs. When the belly button is down, then put the rib cage down. Once the rib cage is down, drop the head. More straight. Straighten your neck, Urena. I want to see the whole back part from the top of the head to the shoulders straight. And change. Feet together, toes up, arms up, knees locked, stomach in, sit up and grab your feet. Pound the forehead on the knees. Second set. Now adjust those at both knees so that they are even 90 degree angle. The both knees are angled out, not one knee forward and the one out to the side. And then go over the right leg, keeping the toes straight up. Don't allow the hip to roll out and keep your body weight to the left. Your left knee should stay down and you should be able to put both elbows on the floor next to the calf muscle. Pull more, press the forehead into the knee, back of the leg is on the floor and change. Bend your right, stretch your left and go over the left leg. Now your right side has to stay down. Right sit bone, right knee on the floor. Now pull the elbows to the floor next to the calf muscle. Forehead on the top of your kneecap, you're in a little more up. This is the time you practice the standing head to knee pose by working the arms, by working the forehead on top of the knee and change. Both legs, lie back, sit up. Hook your first two fingers behind the big toes. Wiggle the weight off your tailbone. As you do so, pull the abdomen in, pull the rib cage up. Create two straight sides. Make a jackknife out of your legs and your spine. Start closing it from the center, from the belly button. Chest up more, chest up, chest up. 
and then go down. You can spread the elbows out if you have long arms and all that, spread them out. But work on the spine and work on the legs and change. Feet together, toes up, arms up, sit up and grab your feet. Double jerk, double exhalation. Spine twist. And please be mindful and conscientious about it. Don't subject your wrists to torture. Bend your left knee on the floor, face the left wall. Now very precisely, cross the right foot over your left knee and touch the heel at the outside corner of your left knee. Foot flat on the floor. Keep pulling the rib cage up, lifting out of your hips, but keeping the sit bones on the floor. And now twist to the right. Look at your left elbow and put it against the outside of your right knee, not below it. Look at it and be precise. That is the key. If that elbow isn't in the right place, your wrist will always be bending because you feel your arm is too long. Now slip the hand behind your left knee. Now it, what the dialogue says that your knee, your wrist, and your ankle are together in the same place. That's the only way to achieve it. All your other things you do does not reflect that instruction and change. If you only in your mind's eye repeated the dialogue, your own dialogue that you learned, and start thinking, is my body doing that actually? Am I pointing with my right toe right now? Somebody right in front of me, I'm talking, but nobody's doing with the toe. Don't sit on your heel. The heel is alongside the hip, and now you're crossed over with the right leg and your left heel together. Now slip the hand straight down. See your elbow is too low. Get the elbow up a little more, your wrist will straighten and you can slip it so that your ankle will be pushing the hand into the knee and they will be all staying in one place without slipping. And then reach around with your left arm Try to grab the inner right thigh with it or just keep it on your back. We'll look over the shoulder. Imagine that you're a corkscrew. The head is the top of the corkscrew. So try to get each and every nerve to get a little benefit from your actions. Change. Relax. Feet together, toes up, arms up, sit up and grab your feet, double jerk, double exhalation. Let's do some house cleaning. Get rid of some of the metabolites. Sit back on your heels, knees together, feet together, place your hands on your knees so your arms are straight, your spine is straight, your stomach is relaxed. Gonna blow out through your pursed lips, ready? Okay, stop a moment. Moist your mouth, swallow. Second set a little faster, but strong abdominal action still. Ready? <laughs> Okay. 
Okay, you got it. On your back, with your arms by your side, palms up. Focus on your facial muscles and take a couple of minutes to take inventory of your body and banish any tight and congested spots. Close your eyes. Focus on your facial muscles and relax your jaw. Move it around a little bit. Make sure your TMJ isn't stuck, your tongue isn't in twisted and knots. And there are no frowns and wrinkles on your face. Smooth all the facial muscles. Allow the back of the head to sink into the floor and create a nice relaxed feeling in the back of your neck. No tension, no heaviness there, just a complete letting go. That should flow further down into your shoulders, your elbows, your tingly fingertips. Take a really deep breath, direct the exhalation to your rib cage. Really feel your vital organs having a more spacious home now. Next exhalation directed to the solar plexus area. That's the emotional garbage pit of the body. We tend to stuff a lot of things in there. Visualize it all flowing into the floor right through your backbone, out and away. Next exhalation to the pelvis. Let the buttocks have a complete meltdown. Breathe into your knees and thighs and calves. Feel the same letting go from the top of your head to the bottoms of your feet. You feel nothing but ease and a feeling of having your inner systems completely scrubbed, completely clean, cleansed of the various tension-producing aspects that we seem to suffer from. Modern man lives in a wrong environment. We are meant to fight dinosaurs and saber-toothed tigers. And nature made a mistake by killing those off and supplanting them with all sorts of psychological tigers. We are under constant attack because the nervous system can distinguish between a saber-toothed tiger and Bikram yelling at you. Same thing, same reaction. So you just have to learn to handle it invest in a healthy future of your quantum mechanical body. I'll stay about 20 minutes for your questions if you have any.